Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. It's the last Eve Talk before the expansion, so I hope that everyone is ready with their preparations. I myself am sitting pretty good, I think. I have all the structure components ready for an M refinery once that comes out. So all I need to do is buy the blueprint, make a copy and get that one in the oven. Um, an interesting fact, someone a couple of Eve Talks ago said that maybe we were underestimating the uh, the, the delay between uh, the current moon mining and then the ability for people to set up refineries uh, in the um, on, on the right spots at the moons and get the new type of moon mining going. And it looks like, yeah, if looking at myself now having to buy the blueprint, um, I'll, I'll, I will first make... Um, a copy of that so that's gonna take a couple of days then i'll uh, have to create the structure itself then deploy it another 24 hours before you can actually start using it there's quite a bit of a delay between uh between the start of the expansion and your ability to get the first refinery up and running so uh, after that for the moon mining itself they still have a cycle there so it could actually be quite interesting to see this also means that uh if everything goes right, I still have to read the, the dev block with all of the details. But if we do get the rigs back, that also means that the refinery in my citadel is going to take a bit of a hit in, uh, in efficiency uh, in that period between um, the start of the expansion and um, myself deploying the refinery where then I'll be able to uh, give you guys the best possible yield uh, in detail. So all of that is in the works of course. Um, after that I'm hoping that the copies for the um, the refineries will be able to make me a, a nice chunk of ISK. So all of that of course is, uh, is basically planned for. I am ready to pull the trigger on everything and uh, just have to wait a couple more days and then we get the expansion. I'm pretty excited for it. Let's move on to the market, of course. That's why we are here. As always, we'll start with Plex. That's going to be at 2.15. There we go. And Plex are, well, basically they're not moving that much, at least from the JITA prices. Uh, those have been pretty stable. So let's take a look at the chart here up slightly but you can see that the median daily prices are all already falling back down a little bit so here slightly up but not by all that much volumes maybe down a little bit that's actually quite interesting so three um million one hundred and seventy one thousand is for the sellers three one twenty seven for the buyers i think basically the margin has narrowed a little bit buyers have gone up in price a touch and uh, these sellers as well so overall though plex a little bit above three million so around 1.5 billion is well a little bit more than that now uh, in order to uh, fund a full month of game time decently expensive but what are you going to do a possible scenario that i hadn't thought about we now know the prices for uh, the blueprints uh, i think it was 4.5 billion for the m refinery and 40 billion for the large refinery potentially we could see an influx of plex here um, in the run-up to the expansion or right at the expansion for people that want to cash out some plex in order to get the isk liquid for those refinery blueprints maybe that's going to happen perhaps not uh, it is something to keep in mind i know that when citadel the citadel expansion itself came out so the very first structures all of this was new for people there was this massive run on a blueprints uh, that also cost a, a, a reduce uh, reduced price for plex temporarily because people just needed the isk they didn't have it and uh, lots of people were willing to sell plex in order to get them something to keep in mind for this expansion i think because potentially uh, the nasdaq blocks will need lots of blueprints to get all of their operations up and running as quickly as possible so who knows they might be willing to spend quite a bit and that might include include the unloading of some plex next up we've got the multiple pilot training certificates also went up in the last few days not by that much and is uh, actually uh, going back down just a little bit below 1.5 billion at the tail end here sellers still at 1.5 billion and 30 million so a little bit above that and the buyers though are below 1.5 billion 1468 so a bit of pressure here i think i wouldn't be surprised if we're actually indeed starting to see increased volumes a little bit of dumping of some of these items just to get your wallets ready for the expansion
Uh, next up we have the skill extractors of course following the plex market decently closely you can again see the hesitation the periods where we're basically almost flat for the price at the tail end though we are up just a touch skill extractors are selling for 355 million and the buyers are at 351 million so very narrow margin here much more narrow than with plex i would say um and uh, there's, there's just not much room. I think basically if Plex comes under pressure even a little bit, we'll start to see extractors come under pressure as well. When it comes to the large scale injectors, a very similar chart to Plex here once again. So I think here, uh, again, people are mostly ready for the expansion, especially knowing that this time CCP already seeded all the necessary skills for uh, I think it was like moon mining but especially for the new way that uh, they're going to do reactions I think most people that that wanted and needed that are ready we also know that the alpha changes aren't coming until December so that rush for skill points may actually only happen uh, after the alpha changes actually hit why would you rush into all the skill injectors right now um, as an alpha character well perhaps to get ready right take a, uh, take advantage of the current prices but most people i think uh, are wait have a wait and see approach when it comes to all of these changes so apparently large skill injectors under pressure a little bit currently being sold for 820 million isk and the bars about 808 million isk um yeah pretty much 807 800 so Pretty expensive item but at least here at the tail end there is this little bit of hesitation and for the small skill injectors very similar um, we're actually starting to see the pattern of these large skill injectors form in the, the small ones as well now that they've been existing for one two three four almost five months and here again at the tail end we see pretty much flat and also a little bit of a pullback compared to around 10 days ago uh, small skill injectors being sold for 168 million isk and the buyers are at 161 uh, i think pretty much in line with what you would expect uh, basically a division of the large skill injectors uh, to show up as so that's it for the plex market really the expansion is going to make this uh, interesting for next week i think after that we've got some minerals let's take a look at that at 735 and that's not going to be good news you may already have seen from the ticker that uh, tritanium is continuing its descent straight through the five isk barrier you can see that maybe six seven days ago there was some hesitation by the market do we really want to break five isk but yeah once we get going we get going so tritanium is now being sold for we can get rid of this filter 487 488 uh, was the price when uh, when i was checking for the market ticker but obviously under pressure by lots of fresh supply the buyers are at um that doesn't make much sense there we go in the green 462 so we have definitely broken the five is barrier uh, a commenter last time uh, did mention that uh, from his experience the imperium isn't really the party that is causing this uh, because the imperium doesn't export lots they actually uh, try to uh, use everything that they mine uh, to produce locally and in fact uh, for their region there's more imports than exports happening and so normally the flood of uh, uh, minerals isn't coming from there now there's a bit of a caveat to that of course Tri stuff like tritanium and pyrite which they're bound to be mining too much of um, when it comes to the values you know that that won't really show up you can very easily load some jump freighters uh, to the brim with, uh, with with tritanium pyrite and isogen stuff that you'll want to dump uh, uh, jump that to Jita and then get back with uh, with like tech two ships maybe right a couple of uh, interceptor fleets or, or, or some moon goo uh, and in order because you want to build up your stocks uh, before the expansion or uh, especially pi right pi is super expensive right now but you'll need lots of pi if you're if you need lots of refineries and uh, that way well you get lots more imports than you get exports but you're still gonna dump your stuff uh, on the mineral market so um, i'm not part of the imperium i can't 
tell you exactly if it's true that they are not exporting any of their minerals personally i think that uh, you know if there is an imbalance in the minerals that are being mined if you've got a surplus of isogen of tritanium that you're gonna dump that somewhere and in all likeliness you know why not use your jump freighters uh, in order to actually do that but uh, it is very uh, possible as well of course that other big groups are uh, maybe uh, also responsible for uh, the dumping of minerals right now right it, it doesn't only have to be the imperium uh, that that is absolutely true uh, groups like tests groups like uh, pandemic horde or pandemic family um, the russians with uh, with all of their um, renters and things like that may have a big impact on that as well so we, we can never say that it's only really one group that is influencing uh, Jita uh, at any given time. But yeah, Tritanium seriously under pressure. You can see that right here. Let's take a look at Pyrite. That is not what we want to see, but it's basically happening. Pyrite at a one year low, breaking five isks. So the sellers are at 496, the buyers are at 486. Very, very cheap. And so despite that, we still see uh, 800 million coming in, 800 million coming in, way more than the volumes of the buyers. Nobody wants to invest in these minerals, despite the fact that they are at one year lows probably close to all-time lows as well at this point breaking five this compiler right is uh, is quite extreme next up we have uh, our one hope which is mexalon unfortunately well there is this hesitation as well today's moving average uh, is actually below 70 isk so it's coming under pressure to 71 72 for the sellers 6808 for the buyers 275 million that's not gonna be good for the price to another 23 million another 15 million um, more supply than demand it's the name of the game in the uh, in the mineral market at the moment and even mixalon which should still be your focus absolutely i think that uh, if you're mining especially in high sec you want to focus on mixed loan sources because that's still getting you i think the best bang for your buck um but there you know it's it's just what's happening right now is that uh, i think partly um it's a bit quieter in Nullsec, so there is more mining happening and thus there there is more stuff coming to the market um there are other markets that is keeps flowing into right everything related to um to structures so we've got pi we've got uh maybe uh, preparations for the blueprint buys uh we've got some tech two ships probably to do your scanning all of that stuff maybe some mining fleet specialized you know you probably want hulks to mine lots of that stuff as well most efficiently uh boosted hulks are, are probably going to be the the ship of choice there so it's it's not uh, difficult to see that isk isn't flowing in the mineral market right now that's going to be adding to all of this as well of course and as a result even mixlon the the best isaac mineral because it is usually a bottleneck in nullsec uh, is taking a bit of a hit on top of that um i'm not sure i haven't checked it for myself but someone mentioned that uh, there's actually a good amount of mixlon uh, that tends to be in the uh, extra ores that come out of moon mining as well so that may actually help nullsec balance things out a little bit and be a little less dependent on uh, high sec for their mixalon sources but overall yeah clearly we are under pressure isogen next uh, flattening out at least so that's good news and uh, not at the one year low we reached 40 isk uh, like uh, in late february but it's still obviously not good uh, isogen selling for 43.65 and the buyers are at 49.80 um, buyers below 50 is very very cheap isogen at the moment um, i constantly mention right mixlon is probably the source that you should focus on keep in mind with the expansion we'll also get the mining ledger and uh, i think if the average prices work uh, pretty swiftly in a mining ledger you can definitely find out which is the best uh, ore for you to focus on uh, just from your past mining that you've done so from all the choices that you have i think that's going to be very very handy uh, for uh, for high sec miners uh, the mining ledger um, basically i didn't spot it myself when i took a look at it on cc but i think that that's because on cc trade just doesn't happen and then if a certain ore type is not traded or hardly traded the system can't give you a, a correct average and so it didn't display anything and so if it works well then i think it could be a very very nice tool to help you uh, decide which ores to actually uh, focus on 
Um, after that, we still have Noxium for the Isaac related ones. Obviously under pressure as well, heading for 325 here, selling for 331 ISK and the buyers are at 320, uh, still 1.5 million, 5.1 million buyers starting here, 8.6 million, 6.2 million. So some people are willing to buy some of this Noxium on the downtrend here i don't blame them this is obviously the previous low in august that we're reaching not the uh, all-time low or the one year low uh, of uh, of late february here again but obviously we lost a lot of ground when it comes to nasdaq we've got zydrine and that is going for less than a thousand isk here so 995 for the sellers and 975 for the buyers i would say yeah, you could buy some zydrine at this point right we've clearly uh, broken the 1000 ISK barrier and uh, if you look at the chart here historically that should be a pretty decent investment I wouldn't blame you especially if you're planning to produce some stuff then you can definitely grab some Zytrine Megasite is a little bit different that one is hovering at around 1250 mark and is actually showing a little bit of volatility going up in price in the last couple of days 1275 for the sellers and 1235 for the buyers I would say average normal price for megasite and uh, there's a bit of pressure on zydrine cr creating a slight opportunity it all depends on which way you thinks you think things are going to evolve of course uh, if you think that it's basically a delay in megasite for some reason uh, and then everything is going to continue to be under pressure which is the general trend then um perhaps you should hold off on on purchasing a zydrine because everything might come even lower but uh, otherwise yep zydrine looks like uh, it might be a buy opportunity more fight next also under pressure breaking 10 thousand isk currently being sold for 9900 isk bars at 9500 isk remember that during this period i managed to pick up uh, more fight for less than 9000 isk on the buy orders so that is now my weight uh, historically speaking more fight has been uh pretty good uh if you could invest uh, it f uh, in it for less than 10,000 isk but right now with everything else that's happening in the mineral market personally i would wait for less than 9,000 isk before i start purchasing any of that that's it for uh, minerals let's move on to pi at 1710 there we go let's go over these here are the construction blocks taking off a little bit after well reaching 11,000 isk right which seemed like a pretty good investment opportunity there was actually a second one not that long after and now we're basically bouncing a little bit above average again so 13,000 for the sellers 12,000 for the buyers buyers probably around average sellers a little bit above average um, it's definitely a, a living market a market that has a lot of activity at the moment it's normal of course we're getting new structures and everything is interlinked at some point so of course construction blocks um, I would say okay if you want to sell them definitely have the patience for a sell order if you want to hold on to them for a better opportunity right historically speaking you know that at some point 14 15 K is possible consumer electronics next basically staying a pretty flat at a good price 14,900 for the sellers, 14,500 for the buyers. Pretty narrow margin, well above average, definitely in sell order territory. Coolants. So what I'm reading in this is that probably consumer electronics are needed a lot for the advanced PI materials, which are the end products that you need for the structures. So um, this one definitely selling pretty well. Coolants though, not doing too well. Oh, that's dropping below 10,000 really. Well, sellers are at 11,000 ISK. And let's see here. Yep, sellers are at 11,000 ISK. Buyers though, 9,250 ISK. That is definitely below average here. On the buyer side of things, I would say that uh, we're very likely to see a rush up towards 10,000 ISK at least for the buyers here. But this is a slight opportunity to try and pick up some really cheap coolants. Uh, if you want to, I would, I would definitely, I think, uh, risk it if the situation is still the same. Because currently, um, this is uh, like below this entire chart, so pretty much a no-brainer. If you want to risk something, uh, oh, yeah, we actually have the 9250. Yeah. Oh no, it's not be below the entire chart because 9250 is around here, but it, it's definitely at the one-year low point. Where the buyers are at and they're all in station nobody's buying in perimeter almost that's a little unusual 
um, but yeah you might be able to strike a nice bargain on these Next up, we've got Enriched Uranium, still selling for 14,500, bars 13,700. Bit more of a margin, uh, giving ground here, so that margin, that's the reason why the margin is increasing. I would still say that at, at 14,500, the sellers are a bit above average, um, and the bars 13,700 is starting to look towards the average of Enriched Uranium, especially on the full one year chart here, this is around average. Uh, but I still feel like it's a, a touch expensive. Uh, integrity response drones, of course, those are pretty damn expensive. Heading back for a double top to 3.5 million, selling for 3.4 million. Bars are at 3.1 million. Very, very expensive. I'm happy that during this little dip, I actually bought what I needed for uh, my M refinery. This gives me the time now to get everything up and running for phase one. After that, we have a couple of months towards moon mining in high sec, where I'll hopefully see a pullback for these. Uh, prices and and thus um, I'll get started on my moon mining refinery as well next up here we've got mechanical parts these are continuing to go down under pressure as well again fuel related seemingly getting pretty cheap 11,000 for the sellers 10,500 for the buyers I would put us a little bit below average at that point um, 10,500 a little bit more than I would like to see uh, for investment opportunities but I wouldn't blame you if you start to pick up some mechanical parts uh, from uh, from buy orders here nuclear reactors next obviously this is going to be related to the advanced pi materials heading for a one-year high 180,000 is for the sellers 163 for the buyers very expensive this one is uh, absolutely great to produce and sell at them excuse me at the moment Oxygen next, finally falling back to a more average 450 here, selling for 464 bars or at 435, right back on the average and yet another um, fuel related PI material that um, is under pressure is pulling back. So that is good news, I think, for fuel. Perhaps there is this expected dip in fuel demands when uh, moon mining isn't happening in the process anymore so all of those get taken down it takes a couple of days at least to get some refineries up and running and so in between those two might see a serious dip in uh, in fuel usage interesting um, robotics next those are finally i would say well below 100,000 isk sellers 97 yeah 97 300 buyers 90,000 is this is a normal price for robotics 90,000 is actually pretty damn good if you look at the rest of the one year chart here so i would say again it's fuel related but if you're looking for that pi investment um, coolants looking good robotics looking good and mechanical parts maybe a bit early but also starting to look pretty good this is quite interesting to me um, rocket fuel next 12 2500 on the chart pretty average 12900 for the sellers 12000 for the buyers sellers maybe a touch above average but definitely um, very much around that next up self harmonizing power course double top reaching a one year high very expensive 3.6 million 3.1 million for the buyers here so um, this apparently is one that people were a little bit unprepared for volumes up so lots and lots of demand uh, people are getting in on the rush a little bit late and here again july look at that that would have been great 2 million now selling for 3.6 million almost a doubling in price um yeah if you saw the video from last week about the gold rushes uh in um in the market towards uh, towards the expansion after the expansion this one could get quite interesting as well uh, basically i do know that there is dev block with all the details around moon mining and the refineries that have been that has been published haven't read it yet but this could of course be what has spurred uh, a second push in the pi market Superconductors next, pretty flat, probably around average as well. Selling for 13,500, buyers are at 12,000 isk. Yeah, I would say that's around average. Test cultures next, yeah, taking off. This is obviously related to advanced PI once again. So I, um, um, please YouTube bots, don't, uh, 
don't ban me for this but i shot my load a little bit early here by selling at around 11k when i purchased at around 8k now i could have sold for 15,000 isk so that is obviously um, that second increase here uh, that is uh, quite significant if you still have some test cultures lying around it's a great time to sell and finally we've got the uh, the wetware mainframes uh, which are going for 3 million isk here at the moment um, on increased volumes so also working on that second increase in price aren't reaching the one year high just yet 3 million for the sellers 2.9 million for the buyers so name of gaming pi is lots of renewed interest in advanced pi that's related to the structures and the fuel related pi actually seems to be under pressure and uh, some of those like the robotics and like the coolants might turn out to be close to investment territory Next up, we've got the Tech One ships. That's going to be at 2520. Probably not much to say here, I would say. Um, minerals under pressure. It's minerals that you need to produce those. So um, here is the Abaddon, pretty much flat at 190. 193.5 million for the sellers, 176 million for the buyers. Pretty wide margin um, supply, basically one to two a day. Yeah, the battleships, they're pretty low in volume. They are having a hard time at the moment. It's still a pretty respectable price though. 194 million almost for a battleship is actually not bad. The Caracal next dipped well below 10, 10 million last week and is continuing the downtrend towards 9 million. 9.7 million for the sellers, 8.7 million for the buyers. Um, right now the stacks, the volumes below 10 million aren't that high yet. But if supply keeps coming in like that, keeps putting pressure on the price, obviously we can expect a buy like here and here to happen when one of the uh, Nausic alliances just buys a couple of fleets of Caracals because of the cheapness. But uh, under pressure here this is the first ship where we really start to see that i think the cheaper mineral prices are um, playing havoc with the tick one prices as well the cofter next actually jumping back up in price towards 30 million yeah selling for almost 30 million bars are 25 million i again think that this could be related to moon mining because um you I don't think that the optimal setup is going to be nothing but orcas or nothing but raw calls when it comes to uh, to doing moon mining. I think that having barges in there is going to um, to actually turn out to be the most cost effective way. And as a result, there is some renewed interest in these ships. The Ferox next was under pressure towards uh, 47 million. Um, not really a volume increase that I'm seeing here, but a slight pushback to 50 million. 52.8 million for the sellers of Ferroxes, 48 million for the buyers, decent volumes coming in. So um, if minerals continue to go down, I think that will continue to basically uh, go down in lockstep as well. Hurricane also pretty low at around 45 million isk, 45 million for the sellers, 43 million for the buyers. Yeah, that's just really pretty damn cheap. I think that this one also uh, is showing the mineral market come through because the, fill, the volumes just are so low that uh, fresh ones that are made with cheaper minerals can be sold at a cheaper price to still at least break even. I don't think you're making lots of risk on these ships at these prices, uh, but as a result, we, we're seeing this impact of lower mineral prices. The Maelstrom next holding at 190, not so bad. 190 million for the sellers, 172 for the buyers. So definitely not all that bad. Uh, I would have to do the calculation myself to see what the margins are at at these prices. But again, what you do see are extremely low volumes. Prophecy next also under pressure, dipping below 50 million, but basically slowly, slowly and getting under pressure here. 50 million for the sellers, 45 million for the buyers, another 62 coming in. That is not great. So I think that here increased volume is actually a little bit of an increased supply um, showing up as well. And as a result here, we're going to start to see prophecies going for less than 50 million. The site next also, oof, that's a pretty sharp dip here. What are they selling for? 7 million bars are at 4.6 million. Very, very cheap ones. I think that um, is there like enough to like, let's say buy everything below 8.5 million. Yeah, that's that's some sites that may happen considering what the chart is doing here. Again, abysmal volumes in the ship though. Typhoon next here is what um, 
We don't want to see for battleships selling for 153 million. That's like 40 million less than the other two battleships we saw. 140 for the buyers. Very cheap typhoons at the moment. Just not much to say. And the Vexor finally is also coming back down towards its normal 10 million ish. I'm not sure what this bump up uh, was, but I think maybe speculation on alpha uh, changes to alpha clone chips or something like that. But yeah, who would think that the Vexor uh, was gonna get a buff? I don't know. 10 million for the sellers, 9.9 .9 million for the first buyer here. Vexor basically back at 10 million, and obviously. Um, the cheaper mineral prices are not going to help this anytime soon either. So the take one ship, unfortunately, rather uneventful at the moment. One possible theory that I just saw on Reddit is that um, it's actually it, we could potentially see a really big delay um, in, uh, in in the moon mining activities, causing some serious disruptions in Take Two production. This might help bring back some Take One ships, uh, at least temporarily. Uh, but uh, other than that, it's it's just not good news with such low uh, mineral prices. Speaking of take two ships, let's move on to those at 3030. And uh, here we should see pretty high prices and sustained, right? At this point, people are waiting for the expansion. We'll have to see exactly what the impact is going to be on the production lines. And here the Aries sitting at around 35 million for the sellers, 30 million for the buyers. Very high prices at the moment. What I think is pretty noticeable here, 127, 98, 39, 70. There's still a decent stack of ships uh, floating around. I think that it's going to be the same for the moon materials. There's going to be uh, reserves there. And I think that at least the bigger groups, which are normally the ones that do most of the moon mining, have a good handle on things. They might try to manipulate the market, of course. But I don't think that they're going to allow themselves to run dry completely either. And next up, we have the Claw here selling for 34.9 million. Bars are at 30 million. Uh, volumes a little bit less than the Aries here, but still definitely available. Yep, pretty expensive, of course, at the moment. Here is the Crow actually taking off to a one year high as well. It's another interceptor, 38.5 million for the sellers. This one is, yeah, not that available anymore. Pretty popular, I think, uh, because it's gonna be a missile. Is that right? Uh, fittings, yeah, because it's missiles, which is really nice uh, on such a fast ship to have. So 38.5 million and 29.5 million for the buyers. Of course, one year high, very expensive. Ares also taking off on actually increased volumes. That's interesting. So people must have actually purchased those. 65 million for the sellers, 50 million for the buyers. Again, starting to empty out. Flycatcher next, pretty flat at a high point. Uh, 84 million availability pretty bad so for the, the frigate seems to be okay for uh, these uh, interdictors yeah availability pretty damn low at the moment 72 million for the buyers heretic next a one year high again on increased volumes currently selling for 76 million bars at 64 million so that must be a pretty sizable investment here Next up, we've got the Hound holding at around 30 million, 31 for the sellers, 28.5 for the buyers. Availability here a lot better, as you can see. Uh, the Malediction next, dangling around 35 million, 36 million for the sellers, 30 million for the buyers. Interceptor in line with the others. Availability, let's take a quick look at that, 26.71. It's okay, but it, it's not great anymore either, all right. Manticore next, back up to 35 million as well. Bars at 32 availability. There's still some, but um, not super great. Nemesis shooting up to 35 as well. 263 here, that's pretty big. 62, 35, but other than that, yeah, the volumes are actually starting to lower of availability. Here we get a purifier as final stealth bomber actually going up right now up to 33.4 million 27 million for the sellers a bit more availability here with 462 on the market and then finally we have the saber also of course at a pretty high price availability again not that great this um is pretty interesting it is in line with my expectations i thought availability might remain a little bit better there are two possible theories here of course it's actually 
getting used and, and, and we're gonna start to run into actual problems if indeed there's a massive disruption to production of Tech 2 ships or people are, as what I expect uh, them to be, speculating. Some people are hoarding them and basically most uh, producers are holding off of uh, bringing new ships to the market. They're only going to do so after the expansion hits and they know exactly what's gonna happen with their supply chains. And so I, I am interested because the smaller the ship, the better the availability, but the interdictors aren't looking great. So we're just going to quickly add a look at some of the other Tech 2 uh, cruisers, for instance. Let's say some logistics. Um, this is actually should be pretty popular, obviously also at a one year high availability here. That still feels somewhat okay for the Basilisk though. That, that's not a lot for going for 306 million, obviously at a one year high as well. Here we've got the Oniros, one year high availability. Yeah, not that great anymore. So that's definitely quite interesting. Scimitar, pretty high up there as well. Let's take a quick look. Do we have, um, I don't, do we, well, we do have command. Oh yeah, the command ships, of course. Let's take a look at those. Yeah, here availability is quite dreadful. One year high, 400 million for the absolution, the damnation. 34 of them, but look at that, almost 600 million isk. Obviously, again, at a one-year high. Here is the Nighthawk chart. That's actually okay. Uh, 309 million, but availability, not that great. Here is the Vulture going for, yeah, more than 500 million. A starty next. Let's take a look at that. Not that much on the market. EOS, again, that's a little bit better. And then here we get the Claymore. All right, there's still some Claymores around and Slipnears as well, actually. So it's it's a bit of a mixed picture. Uh, the charts though do speak for themselves. One year highs pretty much across the board. Uh, if you want to see, maybe we'll take a quick look at the advanced battleships, uh, Black Ops. Maybe is that used in yeah in Nosek probably. Look at that. That's not bad. 1.5 billion availability. I think that's actually normal for the Black Ops here. But they're definitely up in price substantially as well. Here is the Sin. And here is the Panther. I think that the biggest problem that these will be struggling with is actual volumes on the sales themselves. So availability here matters a little bit less. Maybe the Marauders give us a better picture. That's not available at all and is definitely on a one year low. I think that this, uh, actually here the Golem, that looks pretty normal. So I think that the biggest bottlenecks might actually be cruisers, battle cruisers, something like that. Um, very, very interesting insight here, in my opinion, now that I'm thinking about all of this. I, I usually check the frigates because that's like the most easy to get into if you're looking to do some trades in Tech 2 ships. But here now we have this potential disruption across the Tech 2 market as a whole. And as a result, there is this balance to strike between availability and daily volumes in the trade. And the ones where you expect this to be out of whack the most, which apparently here is going to be something like the command ships, uh, at least some of them, uh, and potentially some of the cruisers, that's where you probably have the best potential trades. And so this is definitely something to keep in mind for the next time that you know uh, a change like that is occurring, something like that might happen in the market. Uh, it's not just about stocking up across the board or, or, or just buying at uh, the base volumes or something like that, or what's most available. Nope, try to think about um, how much are they being sold daily um, and, uh, and what's their availability to be expected like, right? Battle cruiser much more expensive to make. That's going to be hit pretty damn hard compared to the frigates, definitely. And so as a result, yeah, cruisers, battle cruisers might have actually been the better investments in Tech 2 ships. Next up, Tech 3 ships. Let's take a look at those at 3810. Let's go for the destroyers first, of course. Um, staying a little bit below 50 million, pretty stable here. 48.5 million for the sellers, 44 million for the buyers. Doors. Those, I think, have been going up a little bit as well. M margin is narrowing here. So it's looking like the Confessor is actually finding its price a little bit below 50 million. Um, signs of overproduction. 46, 26, nothing completely out of order here. Hecate also settling just a little bit above 50, I think. 52 million, 46 million for the buyers. Basically 2 million more expensive or more popular than the Confessor at the moment. And here again, 16, 15, 25. 
nothing completely out of line looking like it's going to actually stabilize jackdaw very similar stabilizing at around 50 million 51 for the sellers 47 for the buyers 35 36 nothing completely out of line i'm a bit surprised by that personally here is this vapor next settling just above 40 million 46 for the sellers 37 for the buyers 43 14 nothing completely out of line so i think here basically for the thick tree ships uh, we are in a stabilization phase they're finding their prices between 40 and 50 million in general um, and uh, yep suppliers they seem to be doing okay with managing the flow they're not flooding the market too much let's take a look at the cruisers very similar situation stabilizing for the legion a little bit below 150 150 for the sellers 135 for the buyers still pretty wide margin and 126 here um, is not too great but that's 60 days old so what's coming in after that actually seems to be uh, quite uh, moderate here's the loki taking off back up to 250 uh, 237 million for the sellers 235 for the buyers do we have an increased volume yes we do so there must have been some purchase perhaps this is speculation and like a, a um, a relisting of everything below that at 237 or something like that because 347 uh, is of course a pretty big volume but spread out across an entire board it's not completely crazy either Proteus next settling unfortunately at a pretty low price of around 120 126 27 million for the sellers 115 for the buyers 46 here but other than that nothing too crazy in volumes either so I thought we would see more signs of overproduction they're just not showing up. Uh, Tengu close to a one year high, selling for 177.5, and the bars are at 165, showing that the potential is there, right? Um, probably the best winner in the last couple of uh, weeks as a result here 99, 62, 100. Same with uh, Loki, you could say 374 coming in here all of a sudden, showing that the potential for production is definitely there, but at the moment, the produce still have the luxury. Of choosing the best chip to invest in and to bring to the market so overall the tech tree market is uh, stabilizing staying decently expensive and uh, not in buy order territory just yet and then for the extra product this week uh, 4130 uh, we are going to take a look at salvage um, i know i already checked it in the video about the gold rushes um, but uh, it was i think a suggestion from two weeks ago something like that and uh, i think it could be uh, pretty interesting to to take a close look at it as part of if talk as well perhaps for the regular viewers that don't watch the other videos so materials not pi this time but salvage materials and it's the regular stuff uh, that is quite a list, so we're just going to quickly go over them uh, a little bit like we did with the previous video on these. But uh, we can clearly see that those um, those uh, materials, salvage materials that are tied to the rigs for refineries have known a very big boost here. Pretty damn nice. And uh, that was basically triggered by uh, CCP releasing the blueprint copies with all the new materials on CC. And here, for instance, alloyed tritanium bars going from 17,000 ISK, currently selling for 24,000 ISK. Pretty nice jump up. Here are the armor plates. Um, not that long ago, we could buy these for 15,000 ISK. Here, the takeoff point is 20,000 ISK, and they're currently selling for 32,000 ISK. So, pretty damn good. Artificial neural networks, a little boost as well. Uh, this is the one that I read wrong, I think, because. It, yeah, because I looked at the chart like this, I, I thought that this was like 12, 13 ISK, uh, right? 11.21 ISK is what it looked like, but I, I didn't see the K behind it. So it's actually from around 11,000 ISK and currently is selling for 24,000 ISK. It's more than double the price. It's definitely uh, a pretty damn good one uh, to have hoarded, uh, but it, it, it's not as crazy as what I thought it was during the video, which was quite swiftly pointed out by you guys of course broken drone transceivers actually are a one year high but not so much uh, related to the expansion 45,000 isk per unit burnt logic circuits um, apparently not really tight that much there are increased volumes but the price is uh, is not all that great capacitor console not 
seen here either chart micro circuits those did take off on higher volumes starting price 1240 currently selling for 2270 almost a doubling this was one that i personally didn't expect to have that much of an impact uh, or, or wouldn't be impacted that much by the expansion but it, it's quite significant in those that uh, are used in those rigs here are con conductive thermoplastics over half a year these did go from around 42,000 to currently selling for 67,000 although the immediate impact is not as visible contaminated Lawrence fluids, all, uh, fluids also at a one year high here are the nanite compounds also at a one year high so lots of these are actually pretty damn high at the moment current pump not too much to, well actually 1.15 million that's interesting 153,000 is for current pumps actually pretty expensive for uh, salvage materials here are the neural networks not too much to be seen here we're just going to quickly go over all of these and if something jumps out like the drone transceivers one year high and not bad starting six months ago at around 1 million takeoff point at around 1.9 million currently selling for 5 million for drone transceivers that is not bad at all um, not much to say here that's okay that looks pretty regular so it's definitely not all of them that's something to keep in mind interface circuits when it looks like that is actually tech 2 related these are taking off quite substantially as well um, but it's still it's still doable from let's say 55 uh, 50,000 to 60 is uh, 6,000 isk it's nice jump up it's a nice little profit but not as much as some of the other winners logic circuits staying pretty flat Lawrence fluids double boost here Ooh, people will think that something might have leaked before that look at that volume increase jump up to 400,000 currently at 450 normal price 130,000 that's definitely not a bad one here shield emitters also up in price substantially selling for 6,500 and the trigger point was 3,000 again pretty much a doubling in a lot of these that's not bad melted capacitors not too much to say here micro circuits power conduits nope yeah power conduits though these are so power circuits is no power conduits is yes definitely taking off here let's say jump off at 600,000 currently selling yeah we're just running out of these coming back at 784 uh, not a doubling but not bad again at a one year high that's pretty high but nothing too noticeable related to the expansion here again that strange double double jump here that's a little bit weird trigger units let's see what those started out as 850,000 is currently selling for yeah, 1.8 million nice doubling of the price of the trigger units trip power circuits well increased volumes but not big moves no big moves on the on a price and finally the award consoles is another one of those that started at 44,000 and is currently selling for 60,000 59,000 it's a nice jump up not the doubling of many of them um, so yeah salvage materials it's another thing to keep in mind when it comes to CCP releasing structures and specific rigs here um, it's it, it requires salvage materials and that is another one of those trade opportunities which I didn't take advantage of let's maybe quickly take a look at the timings here again um, that is the big difference right something like the PI market is uh, something that apparently you need to invest in that like four months before uh, the expansion so uh, like June July was uh, was the bottom where uh, you would have made the best deal it's something to keep in mind for for next time right pi um take two ships those were disrupted quite heavily uh, by a war that happened last summer so that was very tricky to actually still um buy those at, at a good price after the war uh, but here these um pi materials we're talking maybe 10 days or something like that uh, ago where you could have still bought them for a very cheap price and so it does show the the difference the differences uh, it's a bigger gamble because you know it's not something that you will immediately think about well that's going to double in price all of a sudden because of the rigs but um 
yeah it, it is definitely what happened as well the trigger there was cc and uh, it was more speculation in the pi market that four months ago uh, the prices started to increase in price so timings timings very very important if you want to take advantage of uh, of changes to the game by ccp so pretty good experience i look forward to uh, taking a look at all of this stuff after the expansion hits as well uh, that could be quite interesting i think but for now that's going to be it for this eve talk guys thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you next time